Hi, everybody. So, um, so I'm Chief Exec of, a, uh, we call ourselves a data digital and creative agency called Bloom. It's my day job. Um, we're also founder members of the Open Data Institute node in Leeds, which is where I met Paul when he came and said, I've got this crazy idea, might do this thing, can I have some money? Not really sure exactly where it's going to go, but the potential of open and collaborative working methodologies is, is huge, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, let's, let's do something. And myself and a number of other sponsors back Paul. <coughs> and, uh, and I think just picking up on that question about where does the business model come from, what you're about to see is um, part of the answer to that. So Paul said, let's try this. Sometimes in business you go, all right, let's, let's try this. Um, through the Open Data Institute, my agency is working with organisations like KPMG, Arup, um, Leeds City Council uh, and others. Um, people I wouldn't have met prior to that. Uh, we're doing projects in a commercial context which are based on open working methodologies, sometimes on the use of open data, often combined with private data sets in, in private contexts. And I think a lot of this is just about doing stuff in the open in a collaborative way for good, for the right reasons, creates opportunities. And you can't always point the linear path that if you do A, it'll lead to B, it'll lead to C. But what I can tell you is that my experience, our experience is that that is what happens. You make friends with people, people want to work with you, and they go, well, we'll work in this open, collaborative, non-profit environment over here. But then actually, as KPMG, we've got this huge consultant gig over here, and you could help us with the data angle of that. And, and the answer to that is, of, of course, yes. Um, OK, so the data city is part of what's come out of working with the Open Data Institute. It's a group of people who think that if we work together, we can do cool stuff with data to solve problems in cities. Uh, the website's datacity.org. You can follow uh, the Twitter account is uh, Leeds Data City. Um, I'm also, the, our data mutual has been referred to as uh, my fault in, in some degree or shape or form which looks like that might be happening now, and that's starting to gather a lot of interest from people like Horizon 2020, uh, Innovate UK, and so on. So also you can reach me on our Data Mutual uh, Twitter handle as well. Um, part of what we do as an agency at Bloom is we, we work with really heavy lifting volumes of Twitter data, um, uh, specifically for ITV and Sky. So we do a lot of analysis around shows like The X Factor, uh, two million tweets a weekend, uh, over two million people over a series, and we help advertisers make sense of the effectiveness of their advertising. So we do a lot of work with Domino's and the app sponsorship there. We help Sky um, identify which news reporters they should uh, work with, how successful their news reporting is being, the impact of the Premiership. We, I don't know if you saw the Thierry Henry ad as you're into football. So we work very hard on that. We provide all the insights which essentially wrote the script which clubs, which moments, all sorts of bits and pieces. So that's in my sort of commercial money-making, digital advertising, marketing agency world. But actually a lot of that um, thinking and uh, the process we develop there are just as important in other contexts. And I'm going to show you some what we think is pretty cool stuff. So we're very privileged. One of our non-execs is Professor Mathem Mathematics at University of Oxford. And what I'm going to show you is uh, some of the work we've been doing for the University of Oxford. It's also uh, it's a collaboration with the University of Leeds, Leeds Institute of Data Analytics, and the Consumer Data Research Council organisation within there, which is one of the national uh, centres of data research, where we have a, two PhD students working with us, and also the University of Strathclyde. So um, the Data City is a collaboration vehicle, it's just a place where people can come together, anyone with a problem, and some people will get together and try and solve it. So. We started off, I started off, by getting really angry about the Tech Nation report. Uh, Tech City came up and said, uh, what's the digital sector in Leeds like? What's your strengths? And I looked to our city leaders and what have you and said, well, obviously, you know, I've been running a digital agency in Leeds since 1999. It's digital and it's all of this stuff. You must have a list of those. No, no such list existed. So they ran an SICK code-based report which put 400 odd organisations in Leeds. And I knew, although I could not prove it, that that, that was underestimating the size of the sector. Um, and my sort of personal journey started from there. Okay, well, fair enough, tech, 
City did what they could with the information they had. There must be better information out there. So is it possible to understand the economic structures of a city? Surely the data for that must exist. Um, can we see the communities present in a city and how well connected they are? And, uh, and what can we learn from that? Um, does that tell us something about the strengths and weaknesses of a city? Um, can we understand the areas that need civic support, which would be um, hopefully guidance for city leaders for areas of investment? And can we analyse the impacts of policy decisions in real time? So what I'm going to show you is sort of where we're at in all of that. Um, we haven't answered all those questions yet, but uh, I think we're on a, on a positive trajectory. Okay, so in order to map the economic sectors of the city, um, SIC codes are woefully inadequate. So for instance, my own agency, which I've been doing digital for 16 years, wasn't listed in the SIC code based version of the digital sector of, of, the, of the city. Um, we thought about this, um, it, you're turning that around in its head. You don't start with a definition of a sector. You start by working out what there is in the city and then you work out how to pull your sectors out of that. And I think even that question about what is a sector is really interesting, right? So if you'd have asked what the digital sector is three or four years ago, it would have been predominantly marketing agencies. That's how most people understood digital, very early in the uh, conversation about digital transformation of uh, public services, NHS, all these other contexts. Ten years ago, almost exclusively. Um, and then in, in just in the last few years, you know, an increasingly large number of organisations have started to describe themselves as digital. So the first thing we did is we said, right, well, let's take a database view of this. So the first thing to do was take all the company's house data of every organisation registered in Leeds. And then we thought, well, that doesn't capture everything because actually there are really important offices of organisations. So Arup isn't headquartered in Leeds. Um, their registered address isn't in Leeds. Uh, KPMG have an innovation centre with 200 digital specialists in it. That isn't an incorporated business in Leeds. How do you find these organisations? Luckily, there is open data available on rates. So what we can do is then combine the company's house data, open corporate's data, with every rate-paying organisation in, in a city. And between that, you get every organisation, more or less, in a city. In, so any type of company, not-for-profit, for-profit, charity, public sector is all registered with company's house, and every organisation paying any sort of rates um, comes into the core data set. So that gives us, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it gives us a really good place to start. So you've got all sectors, all organisations. Then we thought about how do we understand whether these organisations describe themselves as being digital. So we've got the SIC code uh, based data. So the next thing we do is we perform an iterative cycle of Google searches. So we take the company, find their web address, call their website, pull all of their own descriptors about themselves down from the internet and build a big database of their SIC code, website address, things like their homepage copy, the lists of services, the vacancies that they're offering, and all of this other information to a database. Then what we did was look for other data sources. So we're going out to this side. Can we find their social profiles? Do they have a Twitter account? Do they have a LinkedIn page? Um, do they have a Facebook page? And again, what can we glean from that? So an organization's LinkedIn page will tell you an awful lot about what, how that organization describes the services it delivers, be that commercial or not-for-profit. Uh, you can get a lot from their Twitter bio, just you know, forcing people to describe themselves in a very short number of characters gives you a really good idea of, of who they are. But equally, from the content they share and the people they talk to, you can gain an idea of the communities in which they're active in and whether those communities are what you describe as some, an organisation or community structure which is involved in the digital sector. So there's an awful lot of information. Now, some of that's open data. Some of that's public domain data. Um, uh, none of it's private at this stage. And then what we do is we build a key phrase set of keywords that are uh, pulled from that. And we do things like use the Google uh, tools where they'll tell you what search phrases people are using and other associated search phrases to build a key phrase set of um, words that describe a digital technology sector. Then you run that against the database. So it's an unstructured database. There are millions of data points in this now just for leads. And out of that, you drop a data file. So 468 organisations identified by SIC code. We've just published 3,568 digital organisations for the City of Leeds. And that's all available on the asset register in Leeds. Uh, you can go, you can see them. been through them manually myself um, to check them. And we have algorithms which every time we find false, the danger is you identify false positives. So the algorithm and the machine learning processes that we put in 
um, remove the false positives as they're found, but then also organizations can now go on, claim their record, and update descriptions of themselves, add other types of asset definition um, to the understanding of our city. So that's where we've, we've started. So that's the data file. Um, the bit I've, we've added about 500 organize, uh, 200 organizations since we did this piece of analysis, but I'm going to just show you how we then started to make sense of it. So 3,399 businesses, there were about 27,000 in total um, identified, of which about 3,339 are identified as digital technology. Uh, and then a data set of 22.7 million tweets uh, from 350,000 people collected in October 2014. So that's a first tranche of the study we did with the uh, University of Oxford. So uh, again, using text mining, uh, we can identify, these organizations are then self-identifying. So rather than doing this manually, you run a, we run a, what's called an unsupervised clustering routine over it, which um, identifies uh, from the self-descripting um, information about the organizations, what the main ways in which people are describing themselves. So the data told us these are the most popular ways of organizations describing themselves. There is a huge list down here, but these are the most popular. And then you can sift people back into these little pots, these little buckets. 540 agencies, 296 uh, organizations in uh, audio and visual, predominantly production companies. Uh, a huge number of IT companies. Um, other, which is a lot of the ones where we haven't bothered to group them into a cluster and put them on a bar chart, but we could go down into infinite levels of detail. A lot of publishing organizations, software and telecommunications. So there's quite a big gaming um, community st still in Leeds. Um, this is where they are. So uh, Ilkley sneaks in because it's an LS postcode. We haven't removed it, but technically that's part of Bradford. Um, quite a good spread. And actually, when you overlay this against um, den population density, it's actually quite evenly spread. Um, first thing we do is run a, a clustering technique over it to a resolution of three communities. Um, so we get center, east, and west. Um, but that doesn't really tell us too much. Take it down a level into seven. And then finally into 12. And this is where we think it starts to get interesting. So what we've got here is a very clear cluster around the city centre. We've also got one around Otley um, and then down towards the motorways. Um, and then what we can start to do is um, have a look at not just the number of businesses, um, but the types of businesses by geographic split down. And actually, there's some interesting stuff in this. So this is where our organisations in Leeds are based agencies, IT, publishing, um, and, that, and that's, that gives us some information, right? So what do we want to do? So we're now starting to ask questions of the data set about uh, rates of incorporation of new business, because actually we think we're seeing a slowdown in uh, digital, new digital businesses. So we're just going through that understanding piece before I confidently say that, but we don't, I don't think we're seeing as many digital startups in Leeds as we were, which is worrying. Um, but we'll, we'll get under the skin of that. It might be that it's shifting to other areas. Uh, that'd be interesting. Um, then we start to have a look at the most popular words. So um, here's a word cloud generated from descriptions of the organizations. We start stripping out a few like, words like limited, and you start to get a sense of the, of the skew. So digital is a very broad church, right? Um, so development, technology, information coming out really strong here. Um, not so much on the creative side. I think if you ran this in Manchester, you'd see a much more creative slant to this. Uh, and then we start to do some really cool stuff, just because it looks cool, but actually this tells us some really important information. So at the center of each of these bits where you can see a word is one of the main uh, descriptors of an organization and the services it's offering. So data, design, research, consultancy, software. What we're then doing here is we're using a geospatial algorithm which positions each of those in, uh, in association to how, how closely associated it is with other companies that also use the other words. So you can see the publishing, organizations that describe themselves as publishing, as publishers, very rarely describe themselves delivering these other services. And what we can do is we can start to ask questions of this over time. Is this changing? So going back to my statement earlier about digital used to be a very sort of marketing and um, uh, creative-led discipline, as it moves far more towards data, public services, and so on, what we'd see is this map changing. Um, it's very interesting, the position of data within this. Um, it's everybody's converging around it now. 
Yeah. Whereas I think 10 years ago, that would have been out somewhere here with publishing, just the academic institutions and some of the really heavy, heavy lifting data consultancies, perhaps. Um, but certainly my marketing sector's all over data now. Uh, all the public sectors all over data now, all of the main, you know, your traditional KPMGs and consultant businesses are all over data. So what we're starting to see now is a, is a spatial understanding of how these main disciplines are associated and how often organisations are congregating around one or more of these. Very few of us just do one thing anymore. And you're going to see some more of these diagrams in a minute. Okay, so that tells us who the organisations are in the digital technology sector, geographically where they're based, how they're describing themselves, and um, uh, how the overlapping mix of services is changing. Um, then what we thought we'd, we'd try to do is understand uh, whether there's a way of looking at city from the outside and seeing whether these different clusters and, and community structures are integrated or working in isolation, whether there's such a thing as a footprint for a successful city. Um, and of course, there are probably more than one sort of footprint for a successful city, depending on what the city's particular strengths are. Um, and we thought Twitter would be a really interesting data set to use for that. So we can buy huge amounts of data from Twitter. And what you've got is people publishing into the public domain a lot of information about um, what they do, where they do it, who they do it with, both in their professional and private uh, lives. You've also got uh, an increasingly high percentage of uh, organisations with an official Twitter account. So you're getting that at scale sample of a city. Um, if you compare it to traditional research techniques where you'd have to spend a lot of money to survey a thousand organisations, here we can, in a number of you know, matter of days, look at 22 million tweets, 350,000 people, uh, and provide a huge research base um, for a study like this. So we're doing 10, we've done 10 cities in the first cut, we're now doing 100 cities um, with the universities. Um, as and when that becomes available, we'll publish it and, and again, stick it on the, on the website. Um, first observation, leads over indexes. So as a sample size of the whole UK population, we've got 3.8%, but in Leeds, we've got 6.6% .6 of the UK populace of Leeds um, in the data set that we've held, which tells us something straight away about the city of Leeds and its adoption of digital technology. Here's the word clouds. Okay. So I mentioned the Thierry Henry advert. It's a celebration of the premiership. There was one club in there who aren't actually in the Premiership anymore. Leeds. Yeah, and the reason that Leeds is in there is because it has one of the most engaged, still discussing fan bases of any football club in the country. It's up there with the big uh, clubs, Chelsea, Man United and Man City and Arsenal, um, still. Um, and we've done a number of studies with Sky around that, showing just how super connected and angry the Leeds fan base are. <laughs> um, and, and consequently, the, despite our current situation, the sporting community of Leeds is extremely important to our city. You know, I would make the case that there is a really strong argument for that to be bought, turned into a cooperative for the city of Leeds and sorted out. And actually, it's very important for the, the brand of Leeds. It needs to get back in the, in the top flight. Uh, you've also got a huge student conversation here. And actually, a number of the smaller words are all related to the student communities. So we work with Beckett and we work with uh, Leeds uh, and, and the council, a lot of context around students in Leeds. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And then you can see how that compares to Bristol. So again, you've got a big university, um, but not quite the same sports club presence. OK, so we see communities emerge around the university, student population, sports club, Leeds United, music and nightlife. Yeah, that's what most people are, are tweeting about. Um, but there are also lots of layers beneath that. You can see the role of the council in this. You can see the role of um, some of our uh, service delivery organisations, some of the big corporations and employers. Um, so is it possible to build a matrix of things that a city has and what, in what proportion? And can we link a successful city to the presence or absence of these things? Does it lead to us having an always-on, real-time view of success in the city? So the idea here is do we have to wait a year to see whether what we're doing has had an impact to the next rollout of company's house data or whatever it is that we're relying on, or can we see an intervention making a difference? <clears throat> so 
university student fan love. People love Leeds. These are the community structures of the conversation around Leeds. So what the maths is doing here, and it's really, really advanced data science now, is it is, um, so the way it's described to me, we use a technique called persistent homology. So there's a lot of noise in Twitter data. And then any one day you can get events which cause a lot of distraction. So um, the way it's described to me by the data science team is that it's like it blowing up a balloon in the middle of the community structures that we've mapped. And the weaker communities fall away. And what you're left with is the strong communities that persist through the whole um, listening period, so one or two months' worth of data here. And that gives you real insight into the people and the organizations that are critical to the flow of information around the city. And it's those community structures that we're really interested in, the guys who don't just appear for one day and disappear, but are constantly involved in the city, communicating things about the city and passing information to the other communities. In the placement of these, you can then start to build an idea of who's the most influential organizations or individuals within a city. So the communities out here are only connected to the super connected center of Leeds via other accounts. Yeah. And, and this is where we start to get real insight. So this chart shows Leeds on two separate days. Um, you can see two days can be different. What we want to do is find, so there's a, actually you can see some commonality of pattern based around time cycles. And what we're trying to do is remove all the noise till we get that sort of solid foundation that we, we think we can make some really, really good observations around. And just because I can. So that's the city of Leeds in 3D. So the maths is placing each dot on this. It's not great resolution here, but each dot on this is a, either an account or a community. And then it's placing them geospatially um, according to how well they are connected to the main conversation around Leeds. So the closer you are to the centre of this, the more connected you are to the conversation around Leeds. Communities out here are not connected. Yeah? And uh, information only passes to and from them via other persistent communities in, in, in the data sample here. Here you've got all the communities that we identified, ranked by strength, and what we've essentially produced here is like a DNA, like a thumbprint, fingerprint of the city. And then each of those, you can actually start, you can look at it and you can say, what's that? Okay. So what we find here is that the student community in Leeds is, is pretty isolated, actually. Um, students come to Leeds, love Leeds, engage with the sports and social life of Leeds and leave. Um, and in Leeds, there is a anecdotal, and I've not seen much real data to support it, but there's an anecdotal lament that we're the greatest exporter of students in, in, in the country, that it is really hard to retain graduate talent in our large organisations, that they all want to go to London. Um, and actually, we think we've got here evidence of, of that, um, but also in this, possibly the beginnings of the solutions. So. The business and employment communities of Leeds are not connected to the student communities of Leeds. Right, well, we need to do something about that, don't we? So we can't just sit here as the business community of Leeds and go, why don't the students apply for jobs with me if we're not actually bothering to communicate with the students of Leeds in one of their preferred mediums? Yeah, or even physically, which they will then share on social, which will connect our business account to theirs and we'd find evident in this community structure. Um, so you've got digital tech, health and sport. Um, and what we'd like to see, I think, is, is conversations around this start to, to inform policy decision. And then what we should be able to do is see the impact of that. So if we are better at getting our employer community and our student communities together, we should see, I, I can't remember exactly where the employer communities are, but I think it might be this lot here. And this is the student communities here. Um, we should see these physically move together, and then you can drill into that and see the exchanges of information, the content that's driving it, the accounts that were critical in, in, um, in making that happen, or the event that you ran, or, or whatever it is. There's another community, which I think is this one here, which is the Jewish community of Leeds. Um, extremely well connected to itself, um, but not very integrated to the rest of the city. Uh, and anecdotally, I live in North Leeds, very close to the uh, heart of the Jewish community of Leeds. <laughs> And they do have exactly that. They have a really well-connected, um, but quite insular um, community structure. And I can see that on literally when I walk out my door. Um, and that's, that's all, all very interesting. 
And then what we can start to do is compare our cities to other cities. So you've got six of the 12 that we've done so far, and soon we'll be publishing the 100. Um, some of them, like Edinburgh, look very fractured. Some like London, actually, you need to go in and just zoom right into there. And actually, when you look at the London structure, it's fascinating because actually there are three layers to it when you explode the 3D diagram. You see this globally connected financial center, and you see the capital of a, of a country, and then you see the people who actually live in London. And actually, the sort of sports and community conversations are right down in the bottom layer. And there are very clearly evident three cities which aren't actually particularly well integrated. And I think we're starting to see some of the consequences of that in some of the unrest that we're seeing in that, in, in, in that place. Um, and that's it from me. The, the point, I think, sorry, go on. <laughs> the, the point is that there's a huge amount of data out there. And if we can get it, publish it, and put it in the public domain, people can use it. And then when people want to use it, typically they refer back to you and go, well, we could do some help with using it, or can you shed some light on me? So we've done a lot of this with funding from KPMG and Leeds City Council, but actually, just because we've got so interested in it, I've let my guys invest a huge amount of, my, of our money in it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that will actually come back, because it's so interesting that I can't help but think that people will want to do projects around it, and we'll get sucked along with those. And already KPMG are sort of thinking, well, what do we do with this? You know, they have this whole magic and city strategy. It's not just the UK, so this is a global um, opportunity. Um, yeah, and, and that's what happens when you work in the open, collaborate with people, and then publish everything you do into the public domain. Very, very different way of working from the old closed IP. It's mine. Sign an NDA, and then I'll show you this stuff. You did all sign your NDAs, right? Yeah, yeah. OK, that's it. Cheers. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Alex. That was, uh, that was superb. Have we any questions for Alex? Yes, gentlemen there. Thank you, Alex. That was great. Um, I'll speak loudly so I don't worry about the microphone. Uh, I noticed all your data is based very much around Twitter. Yeah. Um, and therefore, it seems to have a heavy bias in Twitter. In, yeah. in, in the knowledge that there are many other social media platforms that have come and go over time, how uh, exposed is your data set to, to, to a bias? To Twitter as a, as a, as a uh, so it's very exposed to reliance on the Twitter, but hopefully Twitter's not going anywhere for a while. Um, so the practicalities of it are you can't get that information from any other data provider. Because Twitter is a public domain publishing platform, everything you publish, you publish into the public domain. Therefore, Twitter can sell us all of it, along with all the context. So uh, I mean, you can scrape it, but it's not the best way to collect the data. The best way is, is to get it direct from Twitter. It costs a lot of money. But um, what you get is a uh, huge amount of insight because you see all the interconnections and the community structures as well as the content and things like the way the person describes themselves, time of day, uh, and then they give you some basic bio biographic information, whatever you provided as well. When you try and work with data sets from Facebook or others, uh, Facebook's a closed network, so they'll only send you an anonymized view of the data that they hold, so you can't get anywhere near the same sort of insight. That said, um, we overcome the bias question, um, you do have to accept that it is biased toward a particular demographic, but then so is every study. You know, only certain people answer surveys. So everybody who goes, we surveyed 1,000 people on the street. Well, th that's the self-selecting bias, because only certain people stop and answer questions on the street. Only certain people open their door and answer your question. Sample size is 1,000, 325,000. So you've got pros and cons in every, in every data set. I mean, I couldn't, you know, we've probably got we probably sit on a database of 5 million UK individual citizens, which is a huge sample size. Right? You, when you ask any question of it, um, it's robust by most, most method, methodologies. What you can't do is find information on people who are digitally excluded or um, hard to reach. But what you can find is information on the people who serve them, because often they're quite actually very active. If you look at the work like Victoria Betton's doing with Health Habitat and places like this, you know, the organisations are using community and place to deliver services to those who are hard to reach. And actually, you can map that. You can see it. And then you can see how they communicate with each other. And it, it's fascinating. It's just, you know, just from a human interest point of view. Any other questions? Yeah. I was really interested about the Victoria Betton project and how you're mapping things that people know and anecdotally quite often about cities and about demographics. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, so two things have happened. We published that, and Tech Nation have appointed us as a data provider for our city now for the next Tech Nation report. So there's a tick. So Alicia Council have a vested interest in saying 3,500, not 400, and that for obvious you know, reasons. Um, but they are fascinated by this now. And you know, I think once you present this type of information to people, they, they haven't got any choice, have they? They've got to act now because it's, it's there. And they are really keen supporters of the Data City model and way of working. They, they put some money into producing the first iteration of that. Um, and uh, and you know, when I sent the report out last, I mean, literally, we just published this last Friday. Um, but immediately, we got very positive. Yes, this is brilliant. You know, fascinating. And we're organizing a sit down to go, right, well, now we've got the first cut. What, what are the questions you want to answer? What have we got? What more do we need to do? What, do you, what are you already doing that you'd like to, to shed light on? Both the University of Leeds and Beckett have, have both stepped up and said, we want to help do that. Um, and Leeds are holding all these other data sets that they'd like to combine with this. Uh, and it's sort of mushrooming. Yeah. Any other questions for Alex? Uh, yes. yeah, one really quick one. Can you only scope to users for a, um, a less urban area? Yes. Yeah. That would be an interesting yeah. look at the resilience of the community and actually yeah. how people communicate with the infrastructure is not that great. I, I think it would be fascinating to position, to do exact. So this is what cities look like. What does an urban community structure look like yeah. in, that, in, that, in that different geography context? Yeah, great. Perfect. Any other questions for Alex? Wonderful. There will be plenty of opportunities to ask questions and engage in conversation over the lunch break. Um, and quick reminder about the, um, the post-its on the wall behind you. If you've got any topics for discussion, please put the post-its on the wall at the back uh, to be picked up at 5 o'clock uh, in the lightning talks. So thank you very much indeed, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated.